Hello, and welcome to Zurich's nine-month 2018 update discussion with Chief Financial Officer George Quinn. George, welcome to the newsroom. Good morning. Announce the results. Can you give us the headlines? What are the highlights? So this is one of those quiet quarters where we don't announce the results. We just have uh, revenue, headline information. I mean, the overall summary of the results is it's kind of like what people saw at the half year and what they saw at the full year. So we continue on track. Probably the thing that stands out most is we've got some significant growth in the life business, which has been one of our strongest performers. Can we talk a little bit more about uh, the growth numbers that you show? Hmm. What lines of business, what geographies were particularly uh, showing growth? Yeah, so you look at all the businesses, so life, very strong growth. I mean, everywhere, you'd be surprised at the size of the numbers. I mean, market's very strong and the business is doing really well. Uh, farmers also growing uh, through a combination of organic growth. They're growing double digits in the expansion states in the east but also with things like the rideshare deal with Uber. PNC, flat top line, but that's deliberate. So that's us managing it for profit currently. Uh, US slightly down, Europe a bit flat, but very strong growth in APAC and LATAM. Primary sources of growth, I mean, the things that we're well known for, traditional products, protection in life, uh, property, uh, not so much on the liability side, on the PNC side as we try and get the mix in the right place, but I mean, very happy with the progress. Now, Zurich over the last uh, year, year and a half, has been announcing a steady stream of, of acquisitions that really help bolster its market share and markets it wants to be in. Are we seeing those in these growth numbers, particularly in Latin America and a Asia Pac, where we've been active? Yeah, kind of. So you have to look pretty closely, though. So if you look at the actual headline number in LATAM, local currency, which is the best indicator of growth, up about 14, 15%. 7% is the underlying like for like. The difference is growth. So that really is having an impact. What about the, the financial targets, our three-year financial targets? Are there any updates on those? We're not giving formal updates other than to say that we're very pleased with the progress we're making and the story has not changed. We're on track. There was a, a reference in the release to Venezuela. Can you give us a bit of an update on, on what that means and, and what we might be able to see in the future of it? Yes, yeah, so I guess everyone knows that the Venezuelan market has been pretty challenged for quite a long time. We are reaching an agreement to exit the Venezuelan market that will cause us to recognize an accumulated currency translation difference. That's in the balance sheet already, doesn't affect capital, doesn't affect cash. Will affect net income next year though as we realize that unrealized currency difference. I don't think it's particularly relevant in the performance of the firm, but we're just trying to signal to people something they'll see next year. George, there have been some media reports lately about uh, Zurich's total shareholder return. Can you talk a little bit about what that means uh, for Zurich and, and even for its customers? Yeah, so TSR is what uh, the shareholder gets. So it's a combination of the share price appreciation and the dividend. Um, it's important for a number of reasons, but the, probably the most important one is that, that that's what we return to shareholders. So if they perceive that strongly, it means the capital that we can source, which impacts the price of the product that we produce, makes it cheaper. That's the benefit for customers. Great. Well, thank you, George. Thanks for being with us, and thanks for another quarter of great results. Thank you. Thank you.